air and fly bank. Today he can pit his wits against Gordon Strachan as a manager for the first time. This one of two games taking place in the SPL this afternoon, of course. The other game at Pitodri. Aberdeen's match put back after their UEFA Cup heroics during the week. They play St Mirren, and you can see the goals as they happen, along with every kick from here at Fir Park. It's Brian Winter who's in charge today. He said off Christian Carbon is the last time we saw him when Dundee United lost at Kilman at that red card. Subsequently rescinded. Firefighter will be hoping that he doesn't have too much fire to fight today. Play by Chris Innes. Well, several Gretna players who does have experience of playing against Celtic in the past. Greg Fleming, the goalkeeper, hasn't. He's hoping that today will bring him the first clean sheet of his career. Paul Hartley playing in the relatively unaccustomed right back role, although he does have experience of playing at right back at various times in his career. Chris Killen giving chase and the clearance of Aurelian Collin. Collin, the Frenchman who, aside from Mallorca in the summer, had been linked with moves to Wigan and Watford, but Elected for Gretna instead. McManus amongst those forward. Fleming commanding his penalty area and David Cowan's clearance gives Celtic the throw. Just notice that Nakamura is playing on the left hand side, which it may be his favoured left foot, but of course he normally plays on the right hand side and McGiddy on the other side. Nakamura playing in tandem with Lee Naylor. Here is the player of the year. Back for Hartley. Now McGeady. Holland's clearance. Grady not expecting to win too much against Coldwell in the air. Evan Horwood. You can understand a little bit of temerity from the Gretna players and supporters coming to this game. Celtic having scored five in three of the last six SPL games and also three or more in six of their eight so far. I just wonder whether that's the reason Gordon Strachan has gone with Paul Hartlett right back today. Obviously he's a very attack-minded player, great deliverer of a, a cross. If they can get him up in support of McGeady, he could offer plenty of threat down that right-hand side. This kill and judge to have just backed into Chris Innes. He wasn't too convinced by the decision. Killen, who's come off the bench eight times for Hibs, so for Celtic so far since his move from Hibs. Fantastic goal scoring record last season in the SPL before injury struck. 13 goals in just 18 games. Is Jan Torno. Lovely skill from the Uruguay. They're very pleased with his capture. Fabian Jan Torno moved from Uruguay in the summer, and this is what he's capable of. Well, this is one player in the Gretna team who's got that in the locker. Lovely bit of keepy uppy and a, a right foot volley from 20 odd yards, but he's obviously got plenty of confidence to be trying that so early in the game. Scouts have been coming to Fir Park and Fabian Yantorna, we understand, is the main person they've been coming to admire. Cardiff have been linked with him, West Brom and Birmingham, other clubs that 
by all accounts, are looking at the Uruguayan on a regular basis. Actually holds an Italian passport, so there would be no work permit issues. Manus again has made his way forward. The header back across the face of goal, an awkward one. No problem, no for Craig Barr just to watch it safely out of play. So it just looked like they isolate Gary Cordo here. He wins the header, not down from Chris Gillen, just wide. Bit of an early scare for Gretna. Gary Caldwell started for an 11th successive game and it's been very noticeable that despite the fixture congestion in inverted commas at this early stage of the season there's been no reason really for Gordon Stracker to shuffle the pack and Nakamura caught one full in the face how he's wishing now that McGeady had started on that left hand side Lee Naylor Inflicting the wounds on his own teammate. Well, this is a full-blooded volley from about five yards away, and it catches him right in the face on the full. To say that's a sore one is an understatement. There's actually a big problem for the players with so much sunlight today. It's, you see a lot of them squinting, and it's hard for them to to see the ball though I don't think Nakamura could have done an awful lot about that being only a couple of yards away well, Nakamura might only have seen it late but I can promise you he did see it to be fair he's probably the most foul player in the SPL and he's, uh, he's a tough cookie he can look after himself Nakamura see Gretna players attacking the same ball but it breaks for Alan Jenkins but getting it away and the header from Collat almost invited pressure Evan Forward is on line from Sheffield United back to cover before Chris Killen could get there Nakamura who is fit enough to continue have a headache but nothing more than that Nakamura who was a substitute against Milan having missed the previous three matches with a knee injury and he's sooner back in the starting lineup than even his own teammates are inflicting injuries on it well he's a critical player for Celtic isn't he probably has more assists than anyone we've seen for a long time fantastic talent in the final third Gordon Strachan hoping to be the first Celtic boss since Jock Steen to win three titles in a row. We're back on top of the table with victory here today. Cowan's clearance straight for Naylor. That's a Celtic throw. Lee Naylor involved in the Champions League win against Milan, one of 12 Englishmen who was playing in the Champions League during the week. There were 13 Scotsmen who featured in the Champions League action, all on the winning side. Naylor. Jan Torno's header. Jenkins just having to retrace his steps to try and keep it in play, a battle that ultimately he lost. <laughs> McDonald. Ford with the clearance, only Grady Ford for Gretna. That's maybe the option that Celtic have 
with Chris Killam playing up front today. Always viewed upon as a replacement for Venegar of Hesslink when he's out injured. Get a chance to have a look today, see how effective he can be playing alongside the likes of Scott McDonald. Hartley. Now McGeady. Still Aidan McGeady. Nice to sit through for Scott McDonald and well defended by Evan Horwood. The first corner of the game to Celtic. Good patient build up by Celtic on the right hand side, and you can see McGeady here just looks to thread Scott McDonald in a little bit more pace on the ball, and he's going to be in. Aurelian Collin is down injured, just meaning that uh, Nakamura has to wait before delivering the corner. I think that came about after the challenge with McGeady and uh, a fair amount of blood coming back out with the water. I think it was an accidental clash, but it looks like he's taken a knock on his lip. Just a bit of contact there when McGeady toe-poked the ball out to Paul Hartley. Purely accidental, but uh, saw one nonetheless. Well, he actually trained as a boxer, Aurelien Collin, as a teenager in France, so he'll be used to that. Well, maybe not if he was a good boxer. Here's Nakamura. Header away by James Grady. And then the mistake by McGeady, quickly acknowledged. forced to plunder the loan system. Evan Horwood, one of the players that has arrived on that basis, making his fifth appearance for the club today. And the Englishman in this Gretna side. And Manus with the header. Bart. Young Torno. And just to make much weight on the ball four from the Uruguay. And touch that's been rare involvement for Arda Boric in the early stages. McGeady's pace causing problems for Horwood. The challenge was legitimate. And will end up with a cheap throw. Well, it was a great ball by Paul Hartley. Good 50 yard pass right into his path. Here's Killen, throw taken too quickly for the Gretna defenders and then a suspicion of handball inside the penalty area against Gavin Skelton. Naylor, Brown's layoff, fighting Caldwell for it. Hartley making the run. The ball was too hard for him and how he will be wishing he hadn't chased after it and it looks like a hamstring problem yeah certainly the way he was pulling up still holding his hamstring he looks like he's in a little bit of bother well while Hartley will decide whether he can continue Gretna are going to have to make a change it's Aurelian Collin who's going to come off still struggling with the knock that he picked up earlier and in some distress. Danny Granger is the player who will be coming on. It's Gavin Skelton's hand that just made contact with the ball, but Referee, I think, rightly deciding that there was no penalty there. No, that's right. I don't think that Gavin Skelton knew an awful lot about that, and also his hand wasn't away from his body. It was tucked in closely. 
accidental. And still Collin receiving treatment. The stretcher is on. It's the last thing that Gretna need so early in the game. An opportunity for Danny Granger, the English defender who made his debut for Gretna back as a 16-year-old. For the first time that he's featured since the opening couple of weeks of the season in the SPL, although he's played a couple of cup ties since. Well, it's a great opportunity for Danny Granger so early in the game to play against the likes of Celtic, but bit of a blow for Gretna, this can sometimes throw you out of stride when you have to make an early substitution, particularly when it's in the back four. Well, it seemed innocuous when it first happened, this is the Aidan McGeady challenge. Well, knock in the mouth, maybe uh, a stretch as well. Well, there was certainly it wasn't another incident that we could see in the game that could have affected him, but the fact that he's been stretched off, it's maybe more severe than we realised. So Aurelian Collar comes off. And Danny Granger will come on to replace him, just 21 years of age. Granger. Can play at left back. He can also play as a left sided centre half. And it's that latter position that he will take up here. Jan Torno. Cowan keeping Lee Naylor honest. It's a great throw. Naylor claiming that it did take a touch off Cowan. While he's arguing, play continues. And put out of play by McManus for the first Gretna corner. There's good pressure from Gretna. David Cowan did his job by closing down Lee Naylor in the corner, and out of nothing, they've got themselves. An opportunity to get a ball in the box and threaten from a set piece. And Torno is charged with most of the Gretna set piece delivery. Second touch away was by Nakamura. Now the counter attack could be on. Celtic breaking forward quickly with Aidan McGeady. He's got Scott Brown forward with him. If he needs him, McGeady goes alone. Fleming probably had it covered. Well, he got himself into the box, didn't he? And he got the ball out of his feet. He had a free shot of goal, but Scott Brown has made up 60, 70 yards to get alongside him. And I think it's maybe the wrong choice for Aidan McGeady to fire away. You see Scott Brown here, all on his own in the centre. McGeady goes for goal. Hits it wide, and I think on that occasion he's maybe made the wrong choice. Well, he scored against Hibbs, Aidan McGeady. It's his only goal since January. And Scott Brown, as always... Instrumental in the counter-attack for Celtic. And they're poised to make a change as well. And Paul Hartley's hamstring has done for him. Inside the first quarter of the game, both sides having to make a change because of injury. John Kennedy, the player who will come on. This was just Hartley just trying to get onto a Gary Caldwell pass that was slightly over hit and see straight away with him holding his hamstring, he knows he's in a bit of bother. Celtic <laughs> have a, another player down injured. And Scott Brown, the Man who fell awkwardly. Well, this was the aerial challenge, wasn't it? He just landed awkwardly, the small of his back. Looks like he's in a little bit of discomfort, but he he's definitely got the courage to carry on. Well, 
Well, the news from downstairs is that Aurelien Collant has picked up suspected knee ligament damage. It doesn't surprise me on this pitch, I've got to say that. They haven't watered at all, it's very, very sticky, which maybe is a game plan from Gretna because Celtic like to zip the ball about, but in terms of getting purchase, it's not ideal. Grady making life difficult for Donati. McDonald. Murray's challenge. And Craig Barr happy just to get the ball out of his own half. 20 minutes in and uh, Celtic haven't shown an awful lot going forward. To be fair, neither have Gretna. And I'm sure that uh, Davy Arnes will be the happier. This for handball against Chris Innes from the Celtic supporters. It's Caldwell. Take by Brown. Now Jan Torner. Adopting a shoot on sight policy, Fabian Jan Torner. I think the problem from, for him is he looks both ways and he doesn't see a better option. You can't really blame him for shooting. I mean, he's probably a good tw uh, 30 yards out when he pulls the trigger. But there's nothing left, there's nothing right, so maybe an option would have been to take it a little bit further. Davy Irons, officially head coach of Gretna, the man who replaced Rowan Alexander in March when the former went on sick leave. Brown's touch in the midfield. Skelton. Caldwell now playing it right back, he's slotted in there because of Hartley's injury with Kennedy playing at centre-half. And it's maybe how we expected the Celtic to line up in the first place. A little bit of a surprise to see Paul Hartley playing it right back, but as I mentioned earlier, maybe Gordon Strachan thought it was the more attacking option. But it certainly hasn't weakened them at all to see the likes of John Kennedy to come into the side. Naylor. McManus. Kennedy taking his place now in the defensive unit, hoping to keep a clean sheet away from home, which is something Celtic remarkably haven't done now for more than a year. 27 away games in a row. Well, they failed to keep a clean sheet the last time. Falkirk on the 1st of October last year. So far, they've come under next to no pressure at all. Here's Naylor. McDonald. Donati. Brown has Caldwell to his right. Nakamura coming into a more central position. Gretna's tenacity and persistence in the midfield sees them rewarded with possession. This is Paul Murray. Forward. Grady. Played the 400th league game of his career last week. There's a good layback. Jan Torno stretching, couldn't bring the ball under control. Donati had done well to track back. Skelton, Hallward, and Nakamura, the midfield becoming increasingly open, Scott McDonald, Nakamura wanted the ball played forward early, it was a very well-timed challenge by Evan Hallward, he can now make his way forward, Jan Torno, and wins the free kick from the retreating Scott McDonald. But in a nutshell you can see the problem that Gretna have got there, they suddenly get themselves forward, get a few bodies into the box, lose possession and straight away they're getting hit on the counter by Celtic and that's got to be the worry for Davy Irons. Gretna have got to offer a threat going forward but not get caught at the back. 
Substitute Danny Granger amongst those to make his way forward. Bar trying to flick on Jan Torno's free kick. Murray. Manus had time to judge his clearance. Craig Barr with the throw. Oh, by Donati. Hallward taking no chances with McDonald in close attendance. Brady trying to guide it on for David Coward. James Grady having a little bit more impact in the game, had a great bit of movement into the channel just a couple of minutes ago that opened up the Celtic back four. Well, he had the opportunity in the summer, James Grady, to join Colin Hendry at Clyde and become his assistant manager. That turned that down for a chance of an Indian summer in the SPL. McGeady. McDonald. And he's won the free kick. Paul Murray's furious with the decision. Nakamura isn't. His eyes have lit up. A little bit harsh, I thought. Paul Murray saw an opportunity. I think Scott McDonald maybe had took a dad, bad touch on the ball and lost possession. Just see it here. Tries to get his body across. There's maybe a little bit of contact, but it's accidental. Scott McDonald just trying to shield the ball. Maybe just catches him. But this is a serious problem for Gretna with Nakamura on the pitch. 30 yards out, it's just his range. Still Greg Fleming, as I mentioned earlier, waits to keep the first clean sheet of his career. Goalkeeper, despite that, has really impressed the coaching staff at Gretna. It's going to be Donati, I think. No, he does leave it for Nakamura. The wall stood firm. Twice. Kennedy. Death flick from Brown. Back to him from McGeady. Caldwell. Donati. Still Massimo Donati. Naylor. Won the first 50 50, lost the second to Craig Barr. Celtic winning the second ball with McDonald. McGeady. Good run by Aidan McGeady. Barr that stopped him. Kennedy. And the ball put out of play by Grady. Good shift again by James Grady, just doing his job. He's the lone striker, but he's working very, very hard up there to make sure they have no time on the ball. Celtic have been a little bit static in the first 25 minutes or so, particularly in midfield, and I think Gordon Strachan will be looking for the likes of Scott Brown to be a little bit more dynamic. McDonald, the luxury of space to turn in the midfield. McGeady in plenty of space. Donati, Nakamura, Murray stopped him turning, Jan Torno with a vital touch as well. Good play by Donati. Jan Torno's ball forward, Grady playing alone, Furrow up front, stood little chance though. McManus has picked up a knock in getting that clear. Nothing serious. Hobbling uh, just for a moment, Stephen McManus. 
Yeah, just took a kick when he played the ball back to Arta Boric, just took a, a knock on the ankle from James Grady, who once again is working very, very hard for his team. Nailis header. Coward. Bars ball in. Grady left it for Alan Jenkins, who was making the run in behind him. Gretna just starting to get a little bit more belief going forward. It's absolutely key if they're going to offer any threat, try and score a, a goal today and get their noses in front. They're going to have to take a chance, runners from midfield. Just saw an opportunity for Alan Jenkins there where he was heavy with his touch, but at least he, they got midfield runners into the box, which is exactly what they need. Jenkins and Cowan amongst those waiting. Bar peeling off towards the back post. Donati's header alleviated the danger temporarily. Back for Jan Torno. Still Fabian Jan Torno. And Boric could safely watch it over the bar. And you can see why Gretner are very pleased with the impact this lad's made. He's got good touch on the ball, good vision. And I think that's the third or fourth shot he's had so far, so he's not afraid, afraid to pull the trigger. Fabian Yantorno's arrival. Bank rolled, as is everything, by Brooks Mileson. Gretna's managing director. If it hadn't been for him, it could have been Ashton United away rather than Celtic at home today. Games that were being played by Gretna before Brooks got involved. victory against Dundee United came in their last home game, their solitary SPL win so far. They followed it up with what they regard as their worst performance of the season so far, and they defeated Aberdeen, where they were pretty much beaten inside the opening 20 minutes. It's certainly been a performance that has belied their status as having only four points from eight games. Killen. The Ranger is there with him and won the ball cleanly. Gantorna to Grady. Turned into trouble. It was very cleverly won by Scott Brown. Now by Paul Murray. And that's what we call in the game a good foul. Brown just getting the ball out of his feet and when he was going to expose the back four. Good decision to bring him down by Paul Murray. Bars header falling for Naylor. Killen was lurking behind Granger, whose touch was a very important one. Here's Skelton. It's about Gretna's longest serving player, Gavin Skelton. Up for Celtic, of course. A week on Saturday, a trip to Ibrox, first old firm game of the season. The build up starts half past 11 on Satanda Sports 1. A week on Saturday on the 20th. That same day, Gretna go to St Mirren. A game that could also prove to be very important come the end of the season. McDonald. Kennedy, 
Young Torno. Cowan. Curtis clearance falling for Massimo Donati. And Jenkins picks up the loose ball in the midfield and then Grady returns the favour. Jenkins again. Kennedy strongly in to make the interception. Here's Aidan McGeady. Killen. McDonald thought he was offside, made no attempt to go for the ball. And as a result, it's safely through for Craig Fleming. Well, we used to see him, Celtic, playing keep ball against most teams in the SPL. At the moment, they're playing give ball, as are Gretna. Neither team seems to be able to string more than six passes together, and the possession from both teams so far has been pretty poor. Celtic, as you would expect, with the majority of possession, but well, the goalkeeper has been unduly worked so far. And Torno brought down. Scott Brown will be spoken to by Brian Winter. Didn't see a lot in that, to be fair. I think he's entitled to go for the ball, and I think Jan Torno went down a little bit easy, but Jan Torno is Gretna's version of Nakamura. We hear he's very tasty from this distance with a, with a free kick, so I'm sure he'll be the one to test Arta Boric. He's only scored the one goal so far, Fabian Jan Torno, but that's in the SPL. In any case, to score against Cowden Beef as well in the CIS Cup. Not short of confidence from this range. Oh, he scored! Fabian Jan Torno gets it past the wall. Barge didn't move. Gretna leads Celtic by a goal to nil. Well, we called it. We couldn't even blame the sun in the keeper's eyes because it's up the other end, but he pulls the trigger. It looks very, very soft, unless there's the slightest of deflections. To be fair to him, he's put a lot of curl on the ball, he's missed the wall. I think you've got to question Arta Boric, doesn't even make an attempt to go it, and it's not even in the corner, really. Nevertheless, a great strike by Fabian Jantorno and Gretna against the odds of 1-0 up. Fabian Jantorno scoring his third goal of this brief spell with Gretna. Scored against Hibbs as well. And there's a match of that goal against Cowden Beef. But that, if it turns out to be the winner, an earth shattering goal for Fabian Jantorno. Rada Boric beaten once by Milan in the week, beaten once by Gretna so far today. Well, I wouldn't say it was against the run of play because neither team really is threatened. The quality of football in the final third has been pretty poor and I think Celtic are going to need a real boot up the backside by Gordon Strachan to get themselves going. Could have been two. Skelton. Just a long throw into the box, good flick on. Skelton gets it across his man and it's not the worst effort in the world with his weaker foot. But this is going to give Gretna any amount of belief. All of a sudden, he can justify to himself why he's pumped the millions in. Baby the Irons, immediately the goal went in, was quick to give instructions to his players to try and condense the midfield and not to take anything for granted as if they would. And of course the problem they've had this season, Gretna, one goal has never been enough to win a game. I think the key thing for Gretna is that they've got to recognise when they've got an opportunity to put their foot on the ball and make passes and when they've got to clear their lines because it's going to be the easiest thing in the world for them to get nervous, defend a bit deeper and just smash the ball up the park, but that's only going to be playing into the hands of Celtic. We can't play this poorly in the second half, you, you wouldn't imagine. Murray.
Nakamura. Donati. Caldwell. McDonald. Killen was lurking. It was a vital clearance by Chris Innes. Back from McGeady. Nakamura, lovely turn. More good defending. Barr throwing himself in. And the resulting cross really lacked quality. Still, Arda Boric can't keep that clean sheet away from home. 28 consecutive games on the road now without a clean sheet. Well, Fabian Jantorno, we said that he was the creative influence behind Gretna and he certainly looked the most dangerous player, not just his goal, but he's very confident with the ball at his feet and he's definitely the one pulling the strings for them so far. Jantorno. Kennedy clearance hit the Uruguay. McGeady able to bring it away, Alan Jenkins becoming more involved in the midfield now. Forward, and Jan Torno in trying to spin his man as Fowler. Which was a shame because the ball dropped right into the path of James Grady and they had another chance for an effort on goal. McDonald finding Killen. Behind Killen, nobody else in support. Red Scott McDonald's intentions. Oh! Yes. From Cowan, Grady couldn't get it to stick. Naylor wins it back. McManus. Coldwell. McGeady. Well over hit by Coldwell. Donati. Naylor made the run on the overlap, but not at the angle which Donati was anticipating. I think Gordon Strachan knows what he's going to have to speak about at half-time. Celtic definitely need to be a little bit more dynamic going forward and certainly try and stretch the game a little bit more, play with more width when you've got the likes of Nakamura and McGeady in your side. Scott Brown, who likes to make runs from midfield. They certainly need to use the width of this pitch. Gordon Strachan pointing at his watch, trying to... I'm sure referee Winter realised that Fleming was taking his time about the goal kick. There will be quite a bit of time to be added on because of the injuries picked up by Collat early in the first half before he had to go off. Range of the man that replaced him, just shepherding the through ball back to Greg Fleming. Already you're drawn to who's on the bench for Celtic. It must be in Gordon Strachan's mind maybe to shake things up. The likes of Derek Ryden, Evander Snow, maybe Yuri Yarosik. Any one of those three could make an impact if required. And they may well be required because so far Celtic have been way off the pace. Certainly what we're used to seeing them. Yuri Yarosik is in there somewhere. One of the players that was left out of the side that beat Milan. He's just made the one appearance so far this season. Coming in that famous game on Wednesday. McDonald.
Nakamura. Malice's clearance. Skelton. Jenkins. And for Jan Tornos. The game goes into three minutes of stoppage time at the end of this first half. on McDonald. Well, Gordon Strachan's former club, Aberdeen in action today as well. And they lead St Mirren. Scott Severin sending Smith the wrong way. Aberdeen leading St Mirren by a goal to nil. As Gretna enjoy a 1-0 home advantage as well here. Poor pass from Jenkins. You see how hard Gretna are working to get the ball back, particularly in the midfield. The likes of Skelton, Jenkins, Murray and Cowan are putting a real shift in there. I wonder whether they can keep that up for 90 minutes. Well, they have scored quite a few late goals this season, Gretna. Nakamura brought down and again in an area where he'd fancy his chances. This is maybe a better opportunity than the one early in this half. 25 yards out on the angle, the sun in the keeper's eyes. I think he'll be going for goal here. Here's Nakamura. It's be easy in the end for Fleming. Well, what do I know? Very surprised that he tries to float a ball in when he's only 25 yards out with the ability he's got. I mean, that was a fair bit nearer than the, the area he scored the wonderful free kick against Man United last season. Launched long by Kennedy. Scott McDonald. Nakamura did well. McGeady. Two in the centre for McDonald. He had Brown and Killen waiting, but he's never given the opportunity to get the ball across and ends up conceding the free kick. It was a great effort, wasn't it? The back heel very, very nearly came off into Nakamura's path. Here he just tries to nutmeg. He just gets frustrated. But he's looked one of the few Celtic players with a little bit of sharpness still about his performance. Not surprisingly, given the amount of goals he's scored over the last few weeks. It was a day in which many people thought it was going to be Irons in the firing line. Hasn't been the case of it so far. Baby Irons, Gretna, a goal up. Arthur Boric still unable to keep that clean sheet away from home. But Fabian Yantorno, when he signed for Gretna, admitted he'd never heard of the club. Now he's written his place in folklore. The first ever SPL goal for Gretna against the old firm. And at the moment, it's the difference between the two sides. Is the shock on? Is at the moment. Half time at third part. Gretna lead Celtic by a golden nil. Tonio, final day action from eight Satanta Sports One and Satanta Golf. Gretna have a one goal lead against Celtic here at Fur Park. Second half with Stuart and with Jim. Thank you, Rob. It's been a wonderful week so far for Celtic, but will it end on a real low? Next 45 minutes will tell us so much. That's been a week of the unexpected, I think it's fair to say, and no disrespect to anybody that has uh, pulled off a marvellous win. And is this going to be the most unexpected of them all? Here's Jan Torner. Right start from Gretna at the beginning of this second half with Davy Cowan. And McGeady, the overrun, it looked like that had gone out of play for a corner. Jan Torno make the most of the opportunity that perhaps Gretna shouldn't have been gifted, but I just wonder whether it should have been a corner. Well, we get an opportunity to see it. It must have been very close. 
McGeady did a great deal, great job tracking back. Puts his foot on the ball, whole ball or not. Well, I'd say probably a good call by the ref. Good decision. The man who is very well placed. Brian Winter, the referee today, and no sign of a yellow card so far. Well, there hasn't really needed to be, has there? Very few poor challenges, even though we've had a few subs already. Just hamstring pulls and niggles and strains and whatever. Horwood. Jan Torno. Gretna in no hurry to resume play. And Skelton to take the throw, he's been with Gretna all the way through this marvellous journey up through the leagues. He did make his Gretna debut when they were playing in the Unibon League south of the border. Played in Gretna's first ever Scottish League game. Little part of history today as well. Murray. Leaves it for Skelton. Jan Torno. Bodies all around him. Not enough of them will regret the players. Granger. Holdwell's header away. Back from Jenkins. And returned by John Kennedy. McGeady. Donati. Trying to get the better of Bar. He got past him. Couldn't get past Chris Innes, though. Now, a good cover by the centre back, but pretty poor defending from Craig Barr. Far too, far too easy for Donati just to do a step over. And here he's got an opportunity to toe poke it out. He doesn't take it. And in the end, it takes Chris Innes doing his job just to clear his lines. Kinnan looking for the near post flick. And Fleming read the situation well. Not surprisingly, Gordon Strachan's reverted back to playing Nakamura on the right-hand side and McGeady on the left, which is what seems to work so well for them on a, on a regular basis in this SPL. Nakamura's pass just evading Jamie Grady. Forward. Well, he's trying to make life difficult for Colwell, who was forced to concede the throw and took him off in the process as well. Yeah, it's another, another strain. Looks like he's just holding his right knee there. Under pressure from James Grady again, who's done a fantastic job for Gretna. Worked so hard around the channels and boundless energy. Gordon Strachan's got real problems in that right-back area, particularly now with Caldwell limping around. And he's already lost Paul Hartley, who of course started right back today. Hamstring strain in the opening quarter of an hour or so. Hartley playing because of the injury to Joe Doombay during the week. Jan Torno. Skelton. Manus, they're just ahead of Fabian Yantorna. Of course, now Celtic have got that problem where they're playing, looking into the sun. You see all the players, Donati there squinting, struggling to see the ball. Jim O'Brien is being spoken to by Gary Pendrick. O'Brien, who is Loaned out to Dunfermline last season and produced a number of noteworthy performances. It would be his Celtic debut. Good goalkeeping by Artie Boric, who was caught and uh, wasn't happy.
Killens flick brought down by Scott McDonald. He hasn't had an opportunity really to extend his goal scoring run today, hoping to score the fourth consecutive game. Something he's never done in his career. Killen guiding it back down. Appearance by Jenkins. You just see Gretna doubling up on Aidan McGeady there because they know he can go left or right. Still manages to get his half yard of space and get a ball in the box. Gretna have got to be very careful in these early stages. Forward in. Donati! Well, the sights of goal have been few and far between so far. And he couldn't make the most of that one. Well, it may well have been on his weaker side, but he gets it out of his feet. He's 20 yards out in the middle of the goal, and you can't help feeling if he hits the target there, he's got a great opportunity with his quality. And he's already scored three goals in a short time with Celtic. Oh, nice, a dozen or so in this part of 250 games in Italy. Coward. A much better game today than the last time he played against Celtic when he suffered a double break of his leg here as a Motherwell player in the challenge with Paul Lambert. Here's Cowan now. Intelligent headed out for Jan Torna. Coldwell. Granger, getting there ahead of Scott McDonald. McDonald not looking too happy with that challenge, but good defending by the Gretna centre back. Nakamura. Celtic ball. Caldwell seemingly is not suffering as badly as perhaps we feared. Ball in eludes Innes. Donati! Best chance they've had to make it 1 1. Well, it was a great opportunity, wasn't it? Superb forward play by Chris Killen when the ball comes through in the box. Just floating the ball into the box, missed by the centre-back. Nice touch by Killen into his path, and Donati really should be doing better with that. Again, it may be on his weaker side, but keep it low, cross the keeper, and you're probably scoring. Gretna with the majority of attempts on goal so far. And the only one on target, Fabian Yantorno's goal. It was a great concern to Celtic, the fact that they've had 54 minutes of play without a shot on target, but they might be able to remedy that now after the foul by Granger. Killen working hard up there just to keep the attack alive. Maybe uh, maybe a handball, that's the only thing I can imagine that the referee gave that for, because it just looked like a bit of a stramash. <laughs> Gary Caldwell giving a medical update to the Celtic bench. I think this is in a virtually identical position to where Jan Torno scored from in the first half. Sure, Greg Fleming will be wanting to make sure his wall's in the right place. Nakamura straight into that wall. The second at Nakamura free kick. It hasn't reached the penalty area so far. What a character. Boric is clear it's not the best, but fell for Nakamura. And still Nakamura. And now Scott McDonald. Very important block. Play by Evan Horwood. Oh, here he is in close attendance with McDonald again, who's been caught. That's a nasty one from Paul Murray. And it's a very poor challenge. 
This is the same referee who sent off Calvanez for Dundee United against Kilmarnock. Just a little turn by McDonald, he nicks it away, and it's an awful challenge by Paul Murray. I don't know whether it's two-footed or not, but he leads, leaves the air. And you've got to say, that's the type of tackle we want to see stamped out. I've seen plenty of red cards shown for that type of challenge. First player in the book, Paul Murray. Well, he's lucky he's not the first player in the bath. Coming back on his feet. Not at all happy, Scott McDonald, and who can blame it? Nakamura's free kick for Celtic. Fleming comes to meet it. Chris Killen through a crowd of players. Called one in there, was he brought down? Referee has a look, it's a corner. Well, it looked to be a great challenge. Certainly Caldwell didn't appeal for the penalty, so I think it was just a good, strong challenge. He got some of the ball, and that was all he needed to do. But Celtic putting Gretna under more and more pressure. Scott McDonald back on, Celtic restored to their full complement of 11. The flip came off a Gretna head. Now to play for a third Celtic corner. We saw that Gretna had problems before against Rangers when they played against them a month or so ago, playing Ibrox, conceded three goals from set pieces, so they've got to make, make sure they concentrate on doing their jobs here. Swinging from Nakamura, header away came from Jenkins, Scott Brown back out towards Nakamura, that's a lovely take. Back in on his weaker foot, Killen with the header! Closest they've come so far. Well, the pressure's building, isn't it? The pressure is building and that was a great opportunity for Chris Killen. Beautiful touch out of the air by Nakamura, jinx onto his right foot. Manages to float a ball into the box, and this is a free header for Killen. Eight yards out, he really must do better. Beautiful little shimmy by Nakamura, and he gets the ball to the far post. Killen, without a defender near him, I think he should be scoring. Now, should this have been a penalty? No, it looked to be a good challenge, didn't it? Very good challenge by Paul Murray. And Brian Winter getting it right. Bar with a firm challenge that time. Gretna, very grateful to hear the blow, the whistle, and a threat and a free kick. Off by Donati. See Scott McDonald just leading with his elbow there, but nothing doing. I think he's probably not. He's still reeling from that awful challenge on the receiving end of from Paul Murray. Rangers free kick, well over hit. And in terms of possession, Celtic now with three quarters of it over the last five minutes. It's easily been their best five minute spell of the game. Still no way through. Nagidi to Donati. Young Tornak. Losing out. Nagidi back for Naylor. Kennedy. Caldwell. Ranger gets it away, Went back by Caldwell and then Gavin Skelton can clear, only as far as Naylor. Everything in Gretna territory now. McGeady. Naylor. That's happened too often. Well, it took a bobble, didn't it, for sure, but Celtic at least putting a little bit of pressure on Gretna now they're using the full width of the pitch and 
getting up ahead of steam. Gretna definitely guilty of dropping too deep, leaving James Grady very isolated up front. Uh, still not right. Gary Caldwell, not that he picked up probably 10, 12 minutes ago now, and he still has been unable to completely run it off. And persisting with him for the moment. Kennedy's head up, back four from Murray. Boric is trying to make sure that he got some height on the clearance this time. And Jenkins putting it out of play. Coldwell struck. Kennedy trying to help it on. Kennedy. Murray winning it back from Donati. Three against three for a moment for Gretna. And Murray's ball four for Grady. Far too heavy. Well, it was the wrong option, wasn't it? He worked very, very hard to put Donati under pressure. He won the ball back. He had two choices out, wide left. Chose to knock it in the channel. Could have just kept possession. That's what Gretna have got to do better or they're going to give Celtic an impetus to get back in this game. Well, Grady chased after that lost cause, looking like a 36-year-old who's run tirelessly for an hour and I just wonder whether he might be replaced in a moment. Colin McManaman is... Stripped and ready for action. You expect that it would be Grady who will uh, come off, and then a little flash point between Brown and Skelton. <laughs> and before the free kick is taken, Gretna will make that change. And Grady Wall get a magnificent round of applause after his first start of the season. And he's replaced by Colin McMenamin, a man who once scored against Celtic in the Scottish Cup semi-final back in 2004. McMenamin for Grady with probably about half an hour's of action to go. Plenty of pace, Colin McMenamin. He'll, be, he'll run the channels just as well as James Grady and they'll hope he will because Grady had a fantastic hour in this match. Here he is, involved in the action straight away. Forwards clearance out of play for a throw. Now by Skelton, turned by Kennedy for Scott Brown. Pressurised by Jenkins. Naylor. Granger has done a solid job since coming on as an early substitute. They still need to use the likes of McGeady and Nakamura more. You can see Naka's drifting into the middle of the pitch just to try and get himself involved in this match. Brown. And the foul by Jenkins. Donati taking the free kick quickly. Coldwell. And another foul on Scott Brown. Just got to screw the nut. Gretna just try and be a little bit more patient when they're jockeying. Can't help himself just to try and dive in. And Brown does well just to get his body in the way. Delivery too low and flat, easily headed away by Murray. And the ball back over the top, oh, the keeper came out, missed it, McDonald, what a header off the line! Brilliant goal line clearance to keep the lead in time from Evan Horwood. Well, that is just absolutely top-notch defending because you, you, you're just waiting for the net to bulge. 
A free header for McDonald, six yards out, and he does his, does his job for his team, Evan Horwood. Nakamura's corner, away by Innes. McGeady, no handball, Killen. Rangers header away, John Kennedy up there. Back for McGeady. And he's won a free kick, it's constant Celtic pressure. But Horwood has kept that lead intact. Ball gets hoisted into the box and it's won at a far post by Donati and he's six yards out. Free header into an empty net. And Horwood reads the script and knocks it onto the bar. Absolutely superb defending by Evan Horwood. The referee needs eyes in the back of his head at the moment. Everything's going on. Gretna just a little bit over-enthusiastic with their defending. They've given away a lot of set pieces to Celtic, and if they carry on, that's going to cost them dear. Well, he's going to take sanctions by Alan Cowan, the two players being spoken to. A yellow card for the pair of them for refusing to give the ball back for this Celtic free kick. Another Nakamura free kick as Celtic look to get themselves back on level terms. Jenkins with a header that time. Back into the fray from McGeady. Gretna have a player down. Counter attack comes to nothing. Caldwell. Bar let the ball bounce and Fleming's happy to let it out of play. So a yellow card for Craig Barr, who has an unenviable disciplinary reputation. Three red cards in his career already in less than 30 games. David Cowan also picking up a yellow for failing to give the ball back. Young Torner. And he's been brought down. Well, this is what they need, Gretna, just a foothold in the game. They've barely had an attack in the second half. Celtic mounting up the pressure and Gretna have just got to maybe look to try and make a few passes when they get the possession because at the moment it's back to the wall stuff. Well, one Jan Torno free kick has eluded him already. This one much further out. And that one was never going to elude him. No, not, not anywhere near the same quality as his free kick. Well, the other game taking place in the SPL today is at Patodri. Scott Severin penalty giving Aberdeen a first half lead. And a shocking back pass has given Aberdeen a chance for number two, taken by Lee Miller. Aberdeen two, St Mirrenil at Patodri. Scott McDonald getting the efforts in now. He's looked the, the one Celtic player capable of scoring today. Looking, still looking very sharp up front. Forward. Jan Torner. Jenkins. And forward ended up tackling himself. Skelton. Jenkins ball forward. Cowan putting the pressure on Stephen McManus. Jim O'Brien will be on in a moment for Celtic. 20 minutes to go. Skelton. Back from Gavin Skelton and no problems for either Boris despite a few oohs and ahs from the crowd. McGeady. Jan Torner and the foul by Donati gives another St Mirren free kick. And it was a cynical one as well, wasn't it? But Gretna will be thankful just to get a breather, get some respite. What they need to do is recognise that keeping possession is what's going to get them back in this second half. Give their back for an opportunity to move further up the pitch.
Gretna. Not with the quality of delivery needed from those set-piece opportunities. And Aberdeen went 2-0 up a few moments ago. Make that three. Jeffrey De Vischer fouled for the second time in the game. And Scott Severin sending Smith the wrong way for the second time in the game. 3-0 Aberdeen leads St Mirren. Skelton is down injured. Play goes on though. It was a legitimate challenge by Brown. Here's Nakamura. Keeping it in. Nicely run Bustuous challenges coming in in midfield. Gretner got a body over on this left hand side. Here's Jan Torno. Now Skelton. Ball towards the far post and it just didn't have enough on it. Murray was in five yards of space if the ball had cleared Naylor. Gavin Skelton has got the quality to pick him out as well, I just don't think he saw him. Good break by Colin McMenamin, Yantorno threads it into Skelton's path and if they can float a ball to the far stick as a free header, but he didn't even see him. It's only Gretna's second corner of the game, the first since half-time. Goal scorer Jan Torno with the delivery. Nakamura guiding it on for Donati. Granger getting there, making sure, helping it forward towards McMenamin. Jan Torno. Skelton straight at Nakamura. McDonald. The biggest was so difficult to shake off the ball. Footing came from Cowan. Aidan McGeady. That time the foot was from Jenkins. McMenamin doing his best to hold it up, but ultimately failing. Granger. Trying to hit the ball into a neutral part of the pitch. But he's got to pass 10 yards just to his left to Gavin Skelton, an opportunity to keep the ball. This is what I'm talking about, giving, trying to, trying to keep Celtic away from their goal. Keep the, keep the possession when you get the opportunity because they're, they're just losing their nerve at the moment, Gretna. Brown. Nakamura. John Kennedy. McManus. Nakamura. Donati. Giving away. And this time, Gretna can find a man. Karen with the release ball for Murray. He's done brilliantly. Just couldn't quite get around McGeady, but the referee had a long hard look at that before putting whistle to mouth and giving Gretner a free kick. Well, he did so well here, Paul Murray, just jinked, nudges it round, I think he loses his balance, there's probably not an awful lot wrong with the challenge from McGeady. Maybe the referee felt, felt sorry for him after such a good run. Well, not quite the ultimate insult for a pro, but no sub likes being subbed and that's what's happened John Kennedy who came on after 15-20 minutes comes off with a similar time to go to be replaced by debutant Jim O'Brien Irish under 19 international with SPL experience half a season at Dunfermline that's a free kick given away by McMenamin well, we know from having watched him last season, Jim O'Brien's an out-and-out -out winger, so I think this is an attacking move by Gordon Strack, and even though he's slotted in at right back, I think the chances are that they'll push him on, just go with a back three for Celtic, because they've got 15 minutes to get back in this game. Uh, Jim O'Brien becomes Celtic's third right back of the game. by Barr. 
McManus with a clearance. Now they're over two thirds of the way from having taken the lead to getting to full time. Our Gretna still waiting for their first SPL clean sheet, waiting for their first SPL victory against the old firm. And of course, the old firm meets a week on Saturday. Well, Celtic and Rangers both be going into that game on the back of defeats. And they have a frustration about Gordon Strachan. Will this side be able to find the inspiration? Naylor unable to control the ball. Not getting too much chance to control it, to be fair. Ball off Jan Torno, but off his hand, so it's a free kick rather than throw. Taken quickly for Caldwell. Count stoppage time, about a quarter of an hour to go for Celtic to turn this around. McDonald has come the closest to an equaliser. O'Brien. Caldwell. McDonald dropping deeper to try and get some possession. And clearance though by Danny Granger. by Innes. Remember the last Kilmarnock side to beat Celtic, which was some six years ago. And who's he going to be a member of the first Gretna side to beat them? Caldwell. McDonald. Chris Killen. Murray that caught one uh, in the face that time from his teammate. The Nakamura early in the game, it's Hallward that gets it away from McManaman. He's done really well to hold it up, Colin McManaman. And put out a play by O'Brien for a Gretna throw. Really good play by Colin McManaman. Gretna needed a striker to get a ball, take it in, hold it up, and get, him up, get themselves up the pick, pitch, and he managed to do that just right. Helping it on, McDonald going shoulder to shoulder with forward. <laughs> and torn up, beaten in the air by Caldwell, but at the expense of a throw. Brooks Mileson with just 10 minutes or so to sit and bite those nails. Final change made by Gordon Strachan. Sees Yuri Yarosik brought on. His first SPL appearance of the season. Massimo Donati was the player that went off incidentally for Celtic. Well, it's a substitution that suggests that Celtic are going to go more direct. Jarosik has got plenty of physical presence, and he's maybe up there to ruffle a few feathers alongside McDonald and Chris Killen. Innes. Jarosik. And Caldwell. Almost putting it out of the ground. Well, he's dug in Gary Caldwell, but he doesn't, still doesn't look like he's moving as fluently as he would like.
Well, Eric Patelou is going to come on, the Australian midfielder. And Fabian Yantorno is the player that is coming off. The goal scorer makes way to a standing ovation from the Gretna supporters. It's milking the moment, shaking the hand of the referee. Good old pro, wasting as many seconds as he thinks he can get away with. The young Aussie on to replace him. Well, it's a deserved ovation, isn't it? Because not just for his goal, but his general industry and use of the ball, he's been excellent in this match for Gretna. And that's a Celtic ball. Jarosic, Partelou, confirmation of the Gretna change, with Partelou replacing Jan Torno. Jarosic, and he evades O'Brien. Yuri Jarosic, who made his first appearance of the season against Milan, has won league titles in four different countries. Making his first SPL appearance for five and a half months today. Switching yeah, back to back in April. Murray. Ford for Pardalou. But Menemin in the centre. But not there. And again, I don't know what he, why he's in a rush to get that ball in the box. Great pass by Paul Murray, but Pardalou's broken away from Cordua. He can take a touch, maybe lift his head and pick a pass to the edge of the box. Set one of his midfield runners up. And a falling for O'Brien. Lee Naylor. Queuing up at the back post, Yarosik. He came off a defender and then the shout. On the face of it was a brave one from Greg Fleming. A few more disagreements inside the area. Well, it's a great shout by the keeper because the ball's dropping straight to him. Granger's got an opportunity to put his foot through the ball and Fleming gives him a good early shout that it's keeper's ball. Well, Brian stays down injured, back on his feet now. Skelton loses out to Brown. But Manus with a header. McDonald tried to roll his man, but the referee thought that Yarosic was at fault, fouling Grange in the build-up. Well, it's just a long ball. This is what Yarosic was put on for, just to be a physical presence. But he uses his arms unfairly against Granger. And it's a soft free kick because McDonald had got in behind and maybe had an opportunity to get through on goal. Menemid chasing a lost course. Gretna's goal scoring record late in games has been impressive. Before today, five of the 11 goals they've scored this season have been in the last 10 minutes, and four of them in the last five minutes. And we're just about to enter that period. This time it's Gretna with a lead to defend and unaccustomed position for them, really. And whatever happens from here, it has been a magnificent Gretna performance, better than they expected. Killer. Oh, it's in! Chris Killen with the equalising goal for Celtic. And after the defensive resilience that Gretna have shown, a moment of ball watching has seen Celtic get back on level terms. Well, it's good opportunism by Chris Killen, but it's a soft goal from the point of view of Gretna. The ball goes up in the air, they keep it alive. Two challenge, but he manages to nod it in at the fire. It's actually a very good finish by Chris Killen. He knows exactly what he wants to do with the ball. Just gets up early, nods it to the fast stick, and that's Celtic back in the game. It's just keepy up here in the box, but a good, strong header by Killen. And a, a terrible shame for Gretna because they put so much into the game, but they've still got something to protect. Chris Killen scoring his first Celtic goal on his full debut. To the tangible relief of Gordon Strachan.
McManaman. Jenkins. Held four by Horwood. Oh, McManaman just couldn't make the most of the half chance that he wasn't expecting with McManus's header barely reaching Boric. I think that's the key, Jim. He wasn't expecting it because the ball dropped into his path and maybe if he had realised it was an opportunity, he might have been a little bit more composed. They score from the last. Jim O'Brien, long throw. Not from this one. Perfect timing shown by Chris Killen just when his side needed him most. Forward. And Alan Jenkins running into Coldwell off the ball. And no intent. Another goal at Pitodri, incidentally, late in the game. And it's a fourth for Aberdeen. Severin scored twice in the spot. And Lee Miller has also scored twice now. Aberdeen leading St Mirren 4 0. Nakamura. Caldwell. Ball towards Yarisic. Constant pressure from Celtic as they desperately try and get a winner. McGeady. Naylor. Header down from O'Brien. Pardalou with the clearance. Coldwell. Yarisic. And McDonald up there with him, but he couldn't flick it on the way he intended. Last touch off a Gretna defender. In from O'Brien. Nakamura. Driven in again by O'Brien. Skelton's header and he was fouled by Jim O'Brien. It's a Gretna free kick. Well, it's cheap, isn't it? Uh, that will be a big side relief for Davey Irons and his men. Just a clearance. A push in the back. And an opportunity for Gretna to get themselves up to the halfway line and get their breath back for the last few minutes of this match. Stoppage time winner. Won it for Celtic on Wednesday. And they turn this around. That late in the game. Caldwell. Naylor. Into stoppage time. Three minutes for either of these sides to turn one point into three. Here's McGeady. McDonald! Celtic have won! who scored an injury time winner against AC Milan, scores an injury time winner against Gretna. What a week for Celtic. A performance that hasn't been their best by any stretch of the imagination, but what resilience. A goal down with three and a half minutes to go. And they're going to win it. Yellow card for Scott McDonald from the referee for the over-exuberance of the celebration, but you can understand it. Well, it's good out of jail free, isn't it, for Celtic? The ball gets knocked back into the box. We're looking to see it. He's definitely onside. You can see Granger know straight away because he hasn't stepped out. The ball drops down from a miss it from McGeady. Touch, finish from McDonald. He's done his job, but you can see from the side angle here. Granger not step... Uh, Hallward, I think, it is not stepping out, and he knows straight away that he's played...
held on side and that's cost them the game. Quite unbelievable. Scott McDonald scoring his sixth goal in four games and it is the first time in his career that he has scored in four successive matches. The celebration from Gordon Strachan said it all. Out of the dugout, onto the playing surface. It was a celebration of unbridled euphoria. Well, I think it was relief as well, wasn't it, Jim? Because I've got to say, this is the poorest I've seen Celtic play for some time. Maybe even the worst we've seen them this season. They're resilient, they really do dig in, that's why they've been champions the last two seasons, but today they have not played well at all. And two soft goals, certainly from Gretton's point of view, have given Celtic the points, which they barely deserve. Challenge from Yuri Yarosik. One last chance. Davy Irons waving everybody forward for Gretna as they try and salvage a, a point from a game five minutes ago. Looked as though it was going to yield all three. Part of his throw. Back in from Hall. Granger. Boric came out, far from convincing. Effective enough, and it is victory for Celtic, but only just. And Gordon Strachan, in that handshake with Davy Eyes, I'm sure, his offer ring words of condolence. Four minutes to go, Celtic were trailing, but Killen, with his first goal for the club, got them back on level terms before Scott McDonald won it in stoppage time with a goal that was clearly onside. The mark of all good champions, being able to win when you're not playing well. And that is exactly what Celtic have done this afternoon. Could have been such a different story. Gretna led for 50 minutes. Fabian Yantorno giving them the lead. The fairy tale story looked as though it was on. Killam's looping header made it 1-1 before McDonald scored his eighth goal of the season. Not quite as dramatic as the one against Milan, but not far short. Looks as though Gretna were going to make history with a fairy tale victory, but Scott McDonald was the party pooper. And Celtic, for the second time in a week, win a dramatic game in stoppage time with a McDonald goal, making it Gretna 1, Celtic 2. Well, his late goals denied Celtic a title when he was a Motherwell player. Today, Scott McDonald's last-minute strike at his old workplace prevents the surprise of the season so far that puts the champions back on top of the SPL. You couldn't make it up, and all the reaction is coming your way. And I dreamed of days like these as they battled up through the divisions. Davy Irons versus Gordon Strachan in the technical area. And could Celtic follow their heroics against Milan with an equally convincing performance against the bottom team in the SPL? Answer, no. And guess what happened in the first half? Fabian Jan Torno struck. He was 40 to 1 if you had a few pennies on him to be first goal scorer. And amazingly, Gretna were one up at half time and he was not happy. And it could have been even worse for Celtic. Gavin Skelton had that effort, which was just a little too high. He was smoking heavily, I would imagine, Brooks Nelson doing that first half. 1-0 Gretna at half-time. What could Celtic do about it in the second half? It was a stuttering performance from them. Chris Killen had a chance, which just went too high. And how about this save from Evan Horwood with his head, as Scott McDonald seemed certain to score. That kept Gretna in front, and they led in the 85th minute. And then this, they didn't deal with it, Gretna, and they were punished by Chris Kill in his first Celtic goal, 1-1. Would it stay that way? Well, Scott McDonald had other ideas. This is where he used to play, of course, as a Motherwell player. He caused Celtic heartache here before, but it was relief 
that was the emotion today as his goal on 90 minutes gave Celtic victory and got them back on top of the SPL. Brooks Wilson applauding Gretna's brave showing, they were so close. Scott McDonald now with Michael Douglas. Scott, in the end, a happy return to Fair Park for you? Yeah, delighted. It's uh, been a magnificent week, you know, for myself and for the boys. Um, full credits, you know, go out to Gretna today. They played their socks off today and they'll feel very hard done by, but I guess, you know, the game's not over till it's over. You're making a habit of leaving things late, doing it the hard way? Yeah, it's quite dramatic. Um, obviously, I'm, you know, thoroughly enjoying things at the, time, at the moment, you know, playing for Celtic Football Club and, you know, it's, it's a great honour and, um, you know, hopefully the goals just keep coming. You look like you've been a part of that Celtic team for some time now. It's only been a matter of months. How have you fitted in so well? Fitted in tremendously well. You know, the boys are a magnificent bunch. You know, um, <clears throat> from day one, you know, I felt at home and uh, I certainly feel, you know, more than at home, you know, right now and uh, just loving every minute of it. Great example from Chris Killen of why he was included in that Celtic side today. Yeah, you know, Killer's, you know, a tremendous player. You, know, you only need to look at his record last season until he got that, you know, terrible Achilles, you know, injury. He had 15 goals up until then. You know, the boy can score goals, and if given the chance, I'm sure he'll score quite a few for Celtic. Celtic maybe a little out of sorts throughout that match today. Yeah, um, I guess so. You know, it's disappointing. Um, we're very disappointed that we, you know the performance we put in, but you know we grinded it out in the end. And uh, like I said, it's not over till it's over. And uh, I think uh, we've made a habit of doing this in the past, and hopefully we don't need to do it too many other times. And that's you back to the top of the SPL table. Yeah, uh, tremendous. Um, obviously, massive game in two weeks. You know, there's a long, long way to go. Uh, but obviously, it's, it's a nice buffer to, to have three points ahead. You know, at this time of the, uh, this, this time of the, the table. So um, hopefully, we can go to Ibrox now and uh, get a result there. Well done today, Scott. Yes, thank you. So Celtic are back on top of the SPL, and Aberdeen are now knocking on the door of the top six after a 4-0 win today at Pataudry against St Mirren. Helped there by Chris Birchall's challenge on Geoffrey de Vischer, which left, which left no one in any doubt about the outcome here. He just had a wild swing. Down went de Vischer, and Scott Severin did the rest from the penalty spot. St Mirren had held out for 43 minutes, but just ahead of half-time, that was them one down. Perfect from the spot, Severin, and Aberdeen on the back of their efforts in Ukraine, one up at half-time. Into the second half, mistake by Will Haining, set up Lee Miller to dance around the goalkeeper and make it two. And there was no way back, you sensed at that point for St Mirren. Uh, Will Haining with the miss hit, a horribly exposed goalkeeper, Chris Smith, and Lee Miller getting the goal for Aberdeen. 71 minutes and a touch of uh, deja vu with De Vischer again hitting the deck, tripped by Smith this time but uh, I don't think too much doubt about it was there contact with the gloves on the boot it looked as if there was a little enough for De Vischer at the day and the referee was pointing to the spot and Scott Severin sending this one the other direction but uh, success again for him and that was 3-0 for Aberdeen and Lee Miller scored his second of the game as well Jackie McNamara with the supply to the box look at the touch look at the finish that is uh, top striking from Lee Miller. That will help his confidence. And Aberdeen, 4 0 winners against St. Mirren. So you've seen all the action from uh, today in the SPL, and that means this in the Clydesdale Bank Premier League table. Celtic back on top almost unbelievably when you think they'll one down on 85 minutes here against Gretna. But uh, 22 points for them. They go above Hibs, who beat Rangers, of course, at Ibrox yesterday. Hibs on 21, Rangers 19, Dundee United on 16, having beaten Motherwell yesterday. Hearts 4-2 winning against Falkirk has them on 14. Motherwell 13 complete the top six. Kilmarnock stays seventh on 12 because Aberdeen's win doesn't move them positionally, but it does make things look a whole lot healthier for them. 11 points for them. The goal difference is improved, and they now will feel they can advance into the top six. Falkirk on seven. Inverness on seven as well after their draw at Kilmarnock yesterday. And St Mirren stay on seven and I think the likes of Falkirk and St Mirren will be mightily relieved that Gretna lost this game here today. They stay on four and they stay bottom of the SPL. But they did have the man of the match, Fabian Jantorna with Michael. Fabian, that's a cruel way to lose a match. Yeah, yeah, uh, I can't believe it yet. 
Uh, but I think we do we did a, a great game. Uh, we have to keep on working, working hard, and and the results can come. Few people would have believed you could have run Celtic so close today. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, but in football, you never know. Uh, they have great players, uh, so quality. Um, they won against the best, the best team of, of Europe on, on Wednesday. Um, and now we, we did a, a great game. Uh, and in the last five minutes, we lose again, against them. So uh, I repeat, I think we did a, a great game and we have to keep on working. Talk us through your free kick. It was a wonderful strike, a wonderful opening goal for Gretna. Uh, yes, I try to, to practice uh, free kicks uh, because I, I think in the set, in the set players we can win the game and we can lose the game. So it's so important the, the free kicks and uh, lucky for for us it was called. Well. On today's evidence, if Gretna can play like that week in week out, you should do okay in the SPL this season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we we can play in in this level. Uh, we we proved that uh, in 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 four or five games. Uh, I repeat, sorry, but we have to keep on working hard, and and the results come will will come. What's been the reaction in the dressing room tonight? The players must be gutted to have come away from that match with nothing. Uh, we can't believe it yet. Uh, I don't know. I uh, I think. All the players did a great effort, so we have to be proud of us uh, and, and prove that, that we can play at this level. Uh, we have the, the next three games uh, are very important for us, so I think we have to, to do the same in the next three games uh, and keep on working, that's all. Fabian, well done today. You are the Clydesdale Bank man of the match. Thank you. Fabian Antonio almost lost for words there, and that's not just because he's learning the language, uh, struggling to take it in, and they will be uh, in the home dressing room here at Fir Park. Uh, Gretna were almost there, but not quite. Uh, Gretna won Celtic 2, a scoreline, which doesn't begin to tell the story of quite an amazing 90 minutes. With me in the studio, Scott Booth, he's been with me all the way through, and well, he put in a shift as a player, didn't he? We remember in the past, and he's putting a shift in here today from the commentary box to the studio, Stuart Lovell. You like a little wager. Um, that was a, a result almost to upset the odds, wasn't it? Well, I think it was 14 to 1 on Celtic, on uh, Gretna to win the game today, and there were all sorts of punts. 40 to 1, I think you mentioned on Jan Torno to score first, and um, it was just an incredible match. I mean, I, I honestly didn't think Celtic were going to get anything out of the game. I, I don't think they deserved an awful lot out of the game, but they're grinders, aren't they? I mean, we've seen it over the last uh, 18 months, two years, games that you don't think that they necessarily deserve anything from. They keep going right to the end, and they've got people in the, in the team who can score goals for them, and I think they got out of jail today. It is the stuff of champions, isn't it? When you can get to the end of a very much below par performance from them and get all three points. Yeah, but I think I said to you just after about 15 minutes of the match, you know, when, when you're watching a match and you're watching the, the, the champions play, and I've watched Celtic a, a lot over the last three years, when you see a team start so badly, so, you know, off the pace, I mean, we've both had it in, in our careers where you start a game in that, in that way, it's really difficult to, to get it all back again. To, in, a, to, in a rut. Yeah, you get into a rut, and, and, and more than that as well, I mean, let's give lots of credit here to, to Gretna, but, you know, I think Celtic gave them a little bit of encouragement because of the way they started, but Gretna grabbed it, and I think Gretna did fantastically well because all the little mistakes that I've seen them make over the last four or five weeks, um, since the start of the season, in fact, they've just, you know, today they tightened it all up, they were, they were they had a far better shape all over the park, he had a little bit of flair in Yanturno as well, which you will need to try and get some goals. And I just think that as a team performance, it was fantastic and, and it will give them all the encouragement for the rest of the season. Yeah, because while it's a flattener of a result, they will be lifted. When they're able to sort of look back on it, they'll be lifted by what they did here, the way they performed here, Stuart. I think that's right. If you can compete with the likes of Celtic, then you can compete with anyone in this league. Um, just looking on the balance of play, Celtic had very few chances, whether it be from set pieces or from open play. The most frustrating thing for Davy Irons and the Gretna players will be that they limited them to so few chances, but they made a couple of elementary errors, and the winner in particular was, was gifted 
I mean, you always look at, obviously, just looking at teams to squeeze out. It was a little bit like Celtic's winning goal the other night when Cordua had a shot, Dida spilled it, and the right back for Milan hadn't stepped up, and it was exactly the same today with, I think it was Hallwood playing at left back, didn't recognise that as Magidi pulled the trigger, he could step up and play the two strikers offside. Played him onside by about half a yard, and McDonald's in such good form at the moment, he's not going to pass up that chance. But it's, it's a fine line, isn't it? And again, and again we, we knew for Greta to get anything out of this match, you know, they had to have an off form Celtic. That's just that's the way it is in, in, in the SPL for teams like Gretna. They got that, and they managed to dig in and, and, and play good football, as well as it wasn't just a defensive performance from Gretna, they played some good football out there as well. They passed the ball well, and you know, they, 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 they gave as good as they, as they got as far as um, that match. I just feel that it's a, a fine line when it's teams and at the end they were just worn down I think by Celtic. Is that an eye opener today for the likes of Falkirk and St Mirren who will probably expect to be in the relegation dogfight at the end of the season that Gretna are capable of, of that sort of performance? I would have thought that the eye opener came when Gretna managed to beat Dundee United who were absolutely flying at the time and still are going very well and I think everyone thought that was an absolute nailed uncertainty that Dundee United would come here and win and Gretna managed to, to nab a 3-2 victory with a late goal and I think all of us sat up and thought, hold on, maybe Gretna are able to compete at this level. And, I mean, they showed today against a very poor Celtic side, it has to be said, but nevertheless it is still Celtic with quality all through the squad that they were able to compete. I was really impressed with the fitness levels of Gretna because the midfield four, who worked so hard, managed to maintain that right till the end. And, and that was nothing to do with getting tired. The, 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 the goals that they conceded were just lack of concentration and, and sloppy defending, really. How much about the, the Celtic showing today was uh, sparked by the intensity of, of their performance against Milan during the week? What they piled into that, the, the fact they couldn't get started here today? I don't know, I think it was more, a, it was, it was more an attitude, you know, it was a, a frame of mind with Celtic today. I don't think there was anything in it from, from the, the previous match. It was a strong team that Gordon Strachan put out. Um, I just think they just, they, they just thought it was going to happen for them. You do get that at times in football matches. You just think, well, we are better than this side. We are, our quality will shine through. And to be fair, Celtic have started a, a lot of games this season, last season, very slowly, very patiently. And they play patient football and they know that eventually they will create chances and they'll take them. Today, the difference was they didn't create that many chances. So they didn't get any lift anywhere along the, the, the game at all. And, you know, we, we've talked about how many times Celtic have done that towards the end. I, I agree with you. I couldn't see it today. They just hadn't shown enough in order to come back. But when once they get that first goal, then you're thinking it's going to happen for them again. Brooks, Milesons, Gretna were very nearly shock troops against Celtic this afternoon. Chatting afterwards with Gordon Strachan, so close for Gretna against the champions. But in the end, it was a case of great Scott, Scott McDonald, doing what he does best from close range. And from a situation where they look to be losing, Celtic grabbed all three points. They're back on top of the SPL, and there's lots more reaction to come. Match to Michael Douglas. Gordon, we've said it time and time again, but you should never write off this Celtic side. No. Um, we started playing realistic football in the second half. Uh, the, the first half I thought was unrealistic to, to, to play how we thought the game should be played and how the fans expected to be played. And that surface, you might think it's decent, but it was, it was bobbly. Uh, it was dry. And uh, they played, uh, they played uh, reality football, Gretna. And... Uh, they, they they worked incredibly hard then they, where they get that free kick and that just gives them extra legs. It gives them extra legs and it was the one thing we feared but we couldn't do anything about it. Was Celtic a little out of sorts today and, and, and was that anything to do with the game during the week? Well, it's, uh, it's funny, we, we, we played against Hibs a couple of weeks ago and I think it was one of our best performances of the season. We got beat because uh, we, we were just right. But I think if you, if you, if you speak about us, um, that would be very, which you can, we'll, be dis never, never, we'll get analysed all the time and dissected. But I think it, we, we really should say well done to Gretna because I thought that the, the players, once they got that goal, believed they could w win the game of football, which was which had made it a lot harder for us. On today's evidence, if Gretna can repeat that kind of a performance, they'll give themselves a real chance of staying in the SPL. Yeah, yeah, you say that, but I think with most people when they play against us, again, they say, say the same thing because the crowd does inspire players to play better, there's no doubt about that. But saying that, they, you know, they beat Dundee United here 3-2 recently, um, and I think all well, the plaudits really should go to them and their manager today. Scott McDonald is making himself a real hero with the Celtic supporters. I think so, yeah. I think so. Um, 
but he's, he's making himself off, um, a respected uh, member of the team with his teammates and, uh, and he's, he's definitely catching my eye since he has done for the first game of the pre-season so I think you have to you know, you make sure the manager likes you and your player like you then the fans next Chris, Killis, Chris Killen illustrating perfectly why he was a part of that Celtic side today Yeah I felt sorry for Chris because I didn't think the, um, the lads round about him the day made it easy for him to make his full debut and I, and, I, and I thought he was hungry for it and I, if he got the right service he can score goals but he won the game with the right service and I felt sorry for Chris and I just, I'm just i glad he had to fight very very hard and he's got that, uh, that equalising goal and he deserves it Seemed a case of the walking wounded towards the end. Obviously, Paul Hartley off, mm. Kennedy off. Was that was that a, a, a tactical move? That was a tactics eye, just to make sure we get we, we try to get Jim on there and we play with it a right back. So it's desperate times and desperate measures. International break now. You'll have a, a couple of weeks without a game and a chance maybe to get some of these injured players back and, and fit. Yeah, but we've got people to do that. I don't do that. We've got other people for that. Um, so I'll be taking a back seat and let the, uh, the physios, doctors get on with that and, and let some of the lads recharge their batteries. Like Lee Naylor can't get a rest. He just has to keep playing. So we'll, we'll give these kind of people a rest. Well done today, Gordon. Thanks very much. Thank you. Ta. Some people will be queuing up, I'm sure, to have a go at Celtic over that performance uh, today. But there's no real cause for, for Gordon Strachan, Stuart, to, to have any complaint. Is there a...